Hi, kumusta po kayo? How are you? And thank you for tuning in to another edition of Paul the Guzman Presents Art. So we are just outside the gallery right now, and uh, we're just about to go in and have a look at the uh, show by Maura Doyle, who is an Ontario-based artist, and showing at the Audain Gallery. So let's go in, shall we? Okay, so we're just walking down the aisle right now towards the gallery, which is the SFU Galleries. So SFU stands for Simon Fraser University, and they have a bunch of galleries that are uh, all over the that are all over the uh, the city. And we're just gonna go inside the Audain Gallery, right over there, to have a look at the work of. Maura Doyle, Dear Universe, which is on till about March 9th. All right, we're going to go inside now. Have a look. So we're just going to go and kind of like stop in front of the uh, didactic panel there. Don't worry about the didactic panel because I'm going to be putting a lot of this information in the um, description of the video. And... So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and have a look at the gallery, just do a preliminary pan. And uh, as I'm doing that, I should just tell you about the SFU galleries. So SFU stands for Simon Fraser University. They have a couple of locations in Vancouver, which is, which, which is built on the uh, ancestral and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. So, they have plans to actually consolidate the galleries into one big gallery up in the Burnaby Mountain area. So, for now, they are maintaining two galleries, or maybe three, I think. And this is one of the uh, galleries in downtown Vancouver. So, we're going to start our little tour by having a look at this piece by Mora. So, this one is a mail order catalog. From what I can tell, because, okay, just, just a bit of a disclosure here. I was at the artist talk about a few days ago, and it was about an hour long. It was an, hour, it was a, an artist talk with Maura Doyle and the uh, curator, Kimberly Phillips. And a lot of things were covered. Pretty much the entire show revolves around the work that she's done. The earliest would be from the mid-90s. This mail-order catalog one is from the mid-90s and up until the present time. So the entire premise for this mail order catalog is kind of like a combination of like fluxes and mail art and zines. And what I'm showing you here in the vitrine are some of the things that you can purchase through the mail order catalog. So this one is a collaboration between her and a friend of hers. I forgot her name, but it was started back in 1994. And at the time, I think she just, she's either in the process of finishing her bachelor's here at Emily Carr University of Art and Design. And um, in Vancouver, even though she is based in Ontario, she lives in Ottawa, in that area. So a lot of the work that she was doing at the time was really more conceptual based. But at the same time, she's also very interested in a lot of sort of like do-it-yourself movements and do-it-yourself ephemera type of things. This one speaks to me as if it's um, sort of uh, ephemera, zines, fluxes, conceptual. It's more like also, an, for me anyways, it's, it's an administration of aesthetics because there is a process involved with a mail order catalog you know you issue your catalog and then you have people wanting to buy things from the catalog and then you receive their order and then you get their payment and then you arrange for it to be shipped and then you put it in the post so that entire sort of administration is kind of very conceptual in its sort of like makeup and a lot of the work that she's been doing has that sort of like underpinning of conceptual art. But the thing about it, as we progress through the entire exhibition, you're going to notice that 
that sense of conceptualism, C, the, the capital C of conceptualism, is really more of a foundation rather than sort of like something that she kind of adheres to. It's really more how she thinks. Like for example, this work over here, which is kind of like a bubblegum machine. So there's a set of photographs that you're looking at right now. Let me just uh, see if I can do a little bit better sort of like thing there. So that's uh, a set of photographs that is very kind of like reminiscent of um, conceptual photography documentation. And basically what this work is, it's like it's a bubblegum sort of like chewing. This one is a bubblegum chewing machine. And this is all the chewed bubblegum. It kind of is a bit disgusting if you ask me, but <laughs> I mean, one of the processes that she was trying to do was trying to sort of like have some sort of engagement with other people. She would go and ask people to chew gum for her, and then she would accumulate all of the bubble gum in this big ball. And I guess at some point it became a little bit more restrictive or maybe became difficult for her to actually go in. Um, ask people to chew gum for her that she created this bubble gum chewing machine, which apparently during the artist talk still works. So you press that button over there and the motor is actually a can opener motor that she uses. So, I mean, chewing gum requires quite a, quite a feat, you know, you, you need some sort of saliva or liquid matter in order to like reconstitute into a sort of like a gelatinous sort of like a volume. But she didn't, <laughs> we didn't ask her to actually demonstrate the, um, the bubble gum chewing machine. There's also this set of sculptures on this shelf which are, I think, for the most part, all made of clay. And this is what she was kind of like referring to as domestic space-time. And uh, when she first uttered that sort of like um, term, I was kind of like thinking about science fiction. I was thinking about physics. But it actually makes sense when she tells you that all of these objects were pretty much created when she was busy raising her, her kid. Because she's a single parent, so she pretty much has very limited time to make art. And she stays at home, and so she discovered this clay material that she uses to sort of like duplicate certain things that she uses on a daily basis, like for example, little matchbox cars over there, um, maybe some sort of like dish soap, a container of dish soap, and a can of tomatoes. And so this is what she considered her domestic space-time sort of phase, which probably was early 2000s, I would say. And I think around that time, she had returned to Ottawa by then. The one thing that you're also going to observe with the works that she has, there's also this sort of like outsider art quality to them. Because like for example, this piece over here, this is her ceramic works, right? And it's actually mounted on top of, I think this is like a hat that she has lying around, or she may have found it. And this is also a piece of driftwood. Maybe it's made of clay, but I think it's actually driftwood that she probably found because she tends to sort of like go around and drag things into her studio. She had mentioned that. And then it's mounted on this sort of like cement slab that looks like, well, it's in the shape of a shoe. So there's this sort of do-it-yourself type of maybe sculptures for the garden that she tends to sort of like just assemble as she finds things because she was telling us that she lives in an area or she visits an area that has a lot of like objects that you can find and she likes to sort of like combine them into sculptures or perhaps self-portraits because she did actually allude to the fact that a lot of the works that she does tend to be self-portraits. So as time goes by, 
you know, she's creating these objects or these sculptures that kind of like mimic how she feels at that moment. And then there's also a bunch of ceramic works. We already saw the domestic space-time uh, pieces, but this pile of bones is also made of ceramic. And I think, if I recall correctly, she said there's like about 4,000 pieces of bone in here, and each bone sculpture weighs, this weighs like um, a, a plate. So this is like about, I don't know, a few thousand pounds worth of ceramic bone. And she had mentioned that there was this sort of like affiliation between bone and ceramics because they tend to sort of like share simil similar mineral qualities. So that's why she's kind of like a, a sort of like going in there and trying to sort of like look at the relationships she has with with materials as well, and sort of like combining them in her in her conceptual makeup. There's also this work that is made up of swans. Actually, I'm just gonna go and um, focus on that one. Now, these are swans that she cut up from hundred-dollar Canadian bills. So, if you look at this, this um, piece. There are 10 sea bills in there, so um, she had cut them up and pasted them up there as a collage. There's also this fascination about the beaver. <laughs> and um, funny enough, you know, like I'm, we're just gonna go and watch the, the video here of a beaver, and um, it's just going through its motions and um, because the beaver, in when you look at five cent nickels in Canada, on the reverse side is a beaver, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an animal of significance. And um, the curator Kimberly Phillips was also mentioning that the beaver is a symbol of resistance because apparently, when people were first colonizing the area, they were kind of like confronted with all of these beaver dams that they had to sort of like contend with as they were traversing through the landscape. So some of the works were kind of mentioned in detail, while others were not mentioned. This is, I think, her rendition of, of herself as a beaver, <laughs> how she would actually sort of, I don't know, uh, create a sculpture if she was in the mindset of a beaver, I guess. And this is also an illustration, a drawing of uh, perhaps, a, it's a beaver homestead, almost like a little topographical Top, well, maybe not topographical, but it's a cross section of a beaver um, lodge, I guess you can call it that. <clears throat> and there's a lot of other pieces here that kind of like has a semblance of do it yourself. And um, just also allowing some of the um, objects to speak um, to her. And some of them actually she's had for quite a while. There's also a set of drawings here, which I kind of find really cool. I think this was the portion of the talk that I wasn't really too, uh, I wasn't uh, uh, listening too well because I was kind of like distracted by one of the objects. But I'm just gonna go and have a look at these for you so that you can sort of read at your leisure. And then there's this really charming sort of like drawings that she made. And she had made experiments with regard to um, using her left hand to draw. So the, these are the results of those drawings with her left hand, because she's right-handed. I guess in a way she's trying to experiment with how she can go and sort of like use a different part of her brain perhaps dealing with the essence of creativity and just reversing the polarity of your brain in order for you to actually have a different creative experience. 
I really like these, these drawings. And there's another drawing over here. <coughs> Excuse me. This is probably another one of those domestic space-time pieces because it's um it's a drawing of a of a drying rack. But I don't know. Something about it speaks really well to me. It's um it's the hand-drawn nature of it, and I really really like how it just kind of like has this presence in the entire gallery. Like it's on the opposite side of the um of the gallery and it's actually quite, um, the, the presence of it is actually quite palpable. And then we're gonna go to these pieces over here, which are CT scans. Now we're just gonna go and focus on some of them. These you might be familiar with because earlier in the year, or earlier, probably mid-2023, she had a show here in Vancouver with another artist, Robin Arsenault, and I covered that. And it focused on her ceramic works. And when I was talking with the curator there, she had mentioned that there was this sort of like desire for the artist to actually take her ceramic works and x-ray them. And so I think these are the first, uh, this is the first time I've seen these x-ray pieces or CT scan pieces anyways. And um, some of the pieces for that actually are over on this pedestal. Actually, I'm not sure. Maybe these are actually, these are actually different pieces. Because I don't think they match any of the ones in the wall. Let's see. I'm gonna go over here, see if we can. So those are the three pieces there. Yeah, any of them match? I don't think any of the matches. It's maybe, maybe except this one. I'm not sure. But the way she builds clay is by hand building. She, I don't think she mentioned using a pottery wheel. So, I'm gonna put a link to that other video uh, of her ceramic pieces and then maybe you can watch that and see if you can match up these pieces with those. And then there's this piece over here, which is actually a drawing, another self-portrait, because apparently, she, well, she does a lot of self-portraits. And um, this is actually a ceramic piece. And I forgot what she, what the curator said. I think it was, I think the black color is actually a gouache. It's not actually a, um, I don't think it's a, a glaze of any sort. And then there's these um, balls that are, that, that are used as pinning, pinning mechanisms, and I think they're made of clay as well. I'm not sure. I didn't touch them. And then we're gonna go over here for the last piece, because I thought this was a really charming piece, right up there, which everybody was calling the beaver sign. It's kind of funny because when I first saw that, I thought it was a walrus, but no, because of uh, her mention of the beaver as a form of resistance, it kind of made sense. So one last pan around the show. As usual, I will have a lot of this information in the description area. I'm gonna post the press release in that area and also the address and the times that the gallery is open. And hopefully you have time to actually come and visit because the show is on till about March 9th. And the gallery is often open Tuesday to Saturday from noon to five. And um, let's see now. I do like that piece over there though. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please like the video. You can share it as well. You can also consider subscribing to this channel. It's free, it's not gonna cost you any money. And one of the main reasons why I have this channel, I'm gonna be celebrating my one year. This is my 51st 
uh, video. So on the 52nd, that'll be my one year anniversary. I just wanted to create a community, um, not just locally, but also internationally, of people who are interested in art, whether they're historical, whether they're contemporary, emerging, established. And I think it's important to have that sort of like community. And um, thank you for all of the people who have subscribed to me lately. I think we are in a very privileged position because I got an email or a, or a comment from a person in Jamaica mentioning that um, how lucky we are to have contemporary art museums in our city. So I hope that wasn't too long. I hope you enjoyed the video. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have a great day and I'm out of here. Goodbye.